Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So, you're thinking about adding some bass trapping to the corners of your studio. Maybe you went online and you looked up some porous absorber materials, some insulation materials, and you realize they sell them in these big rolls or these big packs. Hmm, maybe you can just stack them in the corner as they are, right? Stack them up all the way and be done with it. That would take care of like the fluffy stuff flying around and you having to handle it in the first place. But how does it affect low frequency absorption? Does it maybe even make it better? Or would it help to cut holes into the plastic? Let's get into it. But before I do that, to help you figure out what you actually need for your room in terms of base trapping, on one hand, these kind of just these rolls stacked in a corner, but also other types of porous absorption, maybe, maybe membrane traps, resonance traps, some sort of combined thing. If you're looking at these options online, you're wondering what is right for your room, I want you to download my complete guide to base traps and base trapping to help figure out what you actually need. This is kind of an encyclopedia, if you will, I put together. It's really short bullet points, lists of all the different types of base traps out there, both off the shelf products and kind of DIY style base traps, telling you how they work so you can actually identify what it is you're looking at how you actually use them in your room, where you should place them, how many you need. It's all in there laid out really nicely for you to get a big picture overview of what kind of base traps are out there and what the right solution for your room is. So again, if you need help with this, figuring out what type of base trap is right for your room, please download my complete guide to base traps and base trapping at the link in the description. All right, so let's talk about stacking unwrapped packs or rolls of insulation material into your corners. How does it affect base absorption? Well, the short answer is it probably doesn't. <laughs> it's pretty simple, okay? So the reason is that if we are considering any change of a base absorption, it would have to increase or decrease the density of the material somehow, basically the gas flow resistivity of the material. So. The problem is that these things, yeah, they, they seem like they're packed tight, but if we want a, a halving or a doubling, let's say, of gas flow resistivity, that would mean that we actually need to increase or decrease the size of this pack by half as well. It's roughly a linear relationship, okay? At least with your standard kind of stonewall or fiberglass materials. So I just want to show you what effect changing the density actually has and remembering that these things yes they're packed tight but we're we're looking at a minute change of size here we're definitely not halving or obviously doubling the size of this stack so let's have a look at the porous absorber calculator and you've seen me use this before it's you can find it on acousticmodeling.com i'll also link it down in the description and it lets you simulate the absorption coefficient of porous materials by entering a depth of the material, a flow resistivity, and then any air gap potentially between the wall and the material. I'm just gonna leave the air gap out for now. So let's say your typical stack of, or your typical kind of roll of insulation material is probably up to 60 centimeters, 24 inches deep, right? These things are pretty deep. And Obviously, they come in loads of different densities, but something that you'll get at the hardware store that is actually made to be put on into drywall and that is readily available is usually somewhere around 6,000 pascal seconds per meter uh, squared, okay? And this is kind of the absorption coefficient curve that you get over frequency, right? Again, what we're looking at here is frequency on the x-axis, 20 to 20 kilohertz, so full bandwidth, full audible spectrum, and then we get this number called absorption coefficient, which goes from 0 to 1, basically from no absorption to full absorption, okay? And as we can see here, this curve kind of stops, uh, starts at the top and then starts dropping off because of how the wavelength of the particular frequency interacts with the depth of this absorption material. Now, let's see what happens when we actually mess with this number. All right, so I'm gonna switch on the second one and gonna go for the same depth. Let's say you increase 
the size of this material, well, obviously that's not possible in practice, but let's say you do increase it by, what is this, maybe 10, 15%, yeah? This is already way more than any packing could potentially do, yeah? Or unpacking could potentially do, all right? Let's see what happens. All right, that's a bit of an anticlimax, but that's kind of the point here as well. Let's see what happens if we go in the other direction. Same thing happens, but in the other direction, right? You really need a significant change in density to actually see a significant change in absorption. And even then, I mean, this is a halving of flow resistivity, and at least in the model, at let's say 100 hertz, we're looking at not even 20% difference. Yeah, what is this? Maybe 15% difference, yeah? So again, what I'm just trying to show you here is that unpacking or keeping these rolls packed doesn't really have much effect on the density or the gas resistivity of the material, and thus the base absorption should be pretty much the same. Now, for some of you, you might wonder, yeah, but doesn't the plastic wrap reflect sound? Yes, it does, but remember, this is always a question of how much, and in particular with this plastic wrap, it's a matter of what frequencies, right? Just imagine putting a plastic bag over a loudspeaker. Most of that energy, most of the frequency will still come through if you're listening to it. Yeah, it's the same here. So that plastic wrap will affect frequencies. It will reflect energy, but it will probably be in the very high frequencies, probably in the thousands of hertz where, where it starts reflecting. Yeah, everything below that can just enter the the or just basically go through the plastic and then be absorbed by the material behind it yeah and that also answers the question whether it's worth cutting any holes in this material definitely not yeah if anything it's a bit counterproductive because while you're at it cutting through the stuff you're also going to be cutting into the insulation material and if you're asking or if you want to mitigate fibers flying around that's definitely not the way to do it so in short should you do this? Yeah, absolutely, go for it. Yeah, One of the things that I always say is I, I want you to get started with treating your rooms because with acoustics, because it's so difficult to grasp what happens and the only way to get an idea of what happens is to actually start experimenting. Yeah, So absolutely, go for it. Get started with treatment if that means just buying two, four, six of these rolls of these packs and stacking them in your corner absolutely do it yeah in my opinion you'll probably find very quickly that they're hideous and you'll want to do something about that yeah but that's a different story yeah so again absolutely go for it you shouldn't worry about this affecting your base absorption in any negative way if anything it's probably a pretty effective low frequency absorber so with that thanks for watching let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio i'll see you in the next video